<laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm a little tired, so that's why my voice is dragging. Um, but You're on I a did plane. Watch a YouTube... No, 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 I'm tired. That's why my voice is dragging. Oh, oh you can't be tired. You got to get fired up. You're trying to make this money, right? <laughs> I am, I am, but um, I had to work 12 hours today, and I didn't get much sleep, so, I mean, not today, but last night, but I got off this morning at 7, so I'm just still tired, Um, but I watched your video earlier today, Um, I think it was the part two with the, with the guy, with the seller, and in the video, I noticed that you um, stated that you were going to get non-occupied owner's insurance. Um, is that something that you do on all of your subject studios? Uh, that's the only way to do it because the owner is not occupying it. It's basically um, the only way to do it. There is no other way. If you're the owner and you're not occupying it and something happens, that's an out for the insurance company to not have to pay you out, correct? Okay, okay. So you wouldn't and... want any reason for them to not want to pay you if the house gets burned down or, you know, life happens. And they say, oh, well, you're not even the owner occupied. It was Johnny living in there you rented out to. Now we have a reason not to pay you. Now your house is burned down. You get nothing. So you don't. You want to always do, you know, what you're supposed to do. So a non-owner occupied policy. your own policy. insurance. Yeah, so okay. a non-owner occupied policy. And you keep that bank and the uh, the original borrower on that, uh, on that insurance as well. Okay, so when you take out the policy, you put the original owner on that policy? Yeah, the original owner uh, has to be on as an additional insured. Uh, the, the mortgage company goes as the mortgagee uh, or the, the mortgage holder, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're the insured, and then the homeowner or the original borrower would be an additional insured. So as long as everybody's still covered, um, you know, it, it should work out pretty good. Just in case, right? Okay. Okay. Are you okay. working on a subject two deal right now? I'm not work, working on a subject two right now. Um, I just wanted to know what was the ins and outs before I get out here messing up, which we are going to do that. But, you know, I just wanted to get some clarity. Um, there was something else that I wanted to ask you. Okay, so you told him in the video that we, you were going to the attorney to get the papers drawn. And... um. What exactly did you mean by that? So once you sign the agreement with him, what do you do with all of the documentation after he signs? Well, the thing is, you have I, what I told him on there is that we close with an attorney. That just makes you know people feel better to know that you're not just some fly by night. I'm going to try to rip somebody off, do something slick. You letting them know that you know there's an attorney involved, and that usually puts people at ease to say, "Oh, all right." So at least we know you're serious and that you're not here playing games. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, so you were just saying that uh, once your tenant buyer is ready to close, be it three or five years down the line that you would close with an attorney? Everything we do with long-term where you're attached to a buyer or a seller, you close through an attorney. Everything you do or everything I do. Right. But but what I'm asking is, so you wouldn't do that process with the attorney until your tenant buyer is ready to close, right? Well, I would do the process with the attorney when I buy the house and when I sell the house on the lease purchase. So both times, oh. if you do it at the same time, that's fine. But the way that the deal I actually did, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. you not you don't get a tenant buyer. Sometimes you have to close it before you get a buyer in there. Just depends on the situation. If you're able to get a buyer in there at the same time and do a double closing or a, you know simultaneous closing, then perfect. But if you have to close it first, you still close it through the attorney to make sure everything's on the up and up. They get all their disclosures in there, and it protects you. So that if something is wrong, you don't. Like you just say, you're going to mess up. You can't mess up. You have the protection of an attorney looking over the whole deal. So, you you know, it's not going to fall on you, basically, is how I understand. So how did you find your attorney? Well, it's any real estate attorney can do it. I mean, it's not anything special. It's just, you know, they're just going to put special disclosures that deal with your state. Say your state has a law against something. You know, I don't know, some stupid law, that, something in California or something. You know, they got a lot of weird laws on you don't. You may not be aware of it. That's why you close through an attorney, so that your transaction mm -hmm. is legit, legal, and you know everything's on the up and up. You don't have to wonder. Oh, I think I messed up. You went through an attorney. You can't mess up. And if you did mess up, it's not really on you. 
So when we're dealing with the attorney, um, there are upfront fees that we have to There's pay? There's always a fee. If a, an attorney okay. even blinks, they want to be paid. Okay, okay. So, okay. But on the front end, uh, when you're buying the house, we pay that that cost. If they're just buying the house, not dealing anything with the tenant buyer or anything yet, you're just buying a house, you pay that fee generally, or that's generally what okay. I do. We typically pay all of the closing costs. Now, if you are going mm -hmm. to put a tenant buyer in there, that tenant buyer pays that fee. I don't pay that fee. When they do their closing and drop their non-refundable deposit, their first month's rent, and the attorney fee, that's all something they pay. I don't come out of pocket for any of that. I just collect my money, close to an attorney, and move on with my life and collect rent until they cash it out in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that was um, that was all of my questions, Chris. Uh, you've explained things very thoroughly, and I and I have a better understanding now of the things that you were stating in the video. Right. I right. Just did wanted you get to the link least... I sent you? I did. I did. Yep. Everything I'm talking about is broken down in complete detail in that link. So I would suggest going there, and it'll actually you can learn all of this stuff in a couple of weeks, really, just how fast it is. If you you know if you got time to go through it and study it. Are we know, talking about the same process. link? The same link I sent you originally. Yep. About the part two. No, no, no. On uh, in your messenger, I just went back and looked, and I saw it was on there. So. If you just uh, say one dollar for the uh, for the course. Oh, that link. Okay, yeah, I know what you're where, talking that's about where you now. get all the uh -huh. technique, all everything's right there. All the forms and agreements, everything you need is right there. Package deal, ready to go. All you got to do is execute from that point. Once you learn the way to do. It. Oh, so that's real. So that training was real. That's that's, that's for real, real for one dollar. That's real. Oh, I was I was like, this can't be real. <laughs> Everything I do is real. I don't do nothing fake. No, I'm not saying you do. I was I just know. looking at the Dollar Tran and I was like, is, well, am if I you be use it, if, if it's a, <laughs> yeah, if you use it, it's a dollar. Now, if you go in there and you start waiting and, oh, I just, you know, I'm dragging my feet, I'm thinking about it, playing around, and that's something totally different. If you go in there and actually okay. get the training, use the training and implement the training, you know, you don't have anything to worry about. So the dollar, how long does that last? It's just a 30-day, uh, $1 trial. It's just 30 days? Okay, okay. Yep. So basically, so you, you did your deal in 30 days. I closed my deal while I was still on the $1 trial. That's right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. While everybody thinking about it, planning on it, wanting to do it, I did it. That's all you got to <laughs> do. Learn information and execute. So, Chris, where did, where did your first subject to um, deal come from? What do you mean? Where did it come from? Zillow, Craigslist. No, I yeah, didn't come from did any you... of that stuff. I have a lot of marketing out already. So I have marketing uh -huh. streams out, phone calls, ringless voicemail, text message, uh, a little bit of email. I have marketing already out, so deals are already coming in. So if it doesn't qualify for okay. a wholesale deal, then you can convert it to this, which is better anyway. I don't even want any wholesale deals. I want more deals like that because you get to stay in a deal and make way more money, and you get the, make you know, money. the house. You get a free house. I mean, who who don't want a house? You can probably even move into one yourself. That is true. Yeah, without a conventional uh, loan. That's right. Everybody's saying, okay, okay well, that's nice to get your money up. Don't get me wrong, but the real money is in getting the house and you got a free house or a house where you maybe spent I a totally thousand, agree with you. For a $100,000 house agree. You know, where everybody's paying all this money. So Absolutely. I basically got a free totally house agree. when the smoke clear. So let me ask you, do you do lease options as well? That's all I do. It's the only way to do it. Okay. What other way is there? I wouldn't mm -hmm. I would not ever do another traditional rental in my life. There's no reason to. When they have this new strategy, well it's not even new, it's just people don't know how to do it. That's why I say it's three ways about real estate. Cash, credit, or knowledge. If you don't have the cash and you don't have the credit, get that knowledge and you'd be like, Wow, which is better to buy the real estate that way anyway, or do anything in real estate, no money down invest. The only way to do it to make mm -hmm. sense to me. I wouldn't even think about going and getting a loan and putting twenty and thirty and percent down and having them do an examination on my credit history and beg to borrow and I'm not doing all that. It's a way easier way. That's why I say go click that program and get the training started and you'll be amazed. You'll say, Man, I don't even want to see nothing else. That's all I'm doing. You'll be hooked. So I noticed that you left off the video uh, I don't, and I don't know if you're doing another one. I don't know if there's a part three, but I want to ask, 
um, when you went by to see the house, um, was there a lot that you needed to fix inside of the house before you found a tenant buyer, or are you making the tenant buyer responsible for the repairs? Tenant buyer is responsible for all repairs and maintenance of the house. That's why I saw power. Okay. Who wants to fix up the okay. house? Okay. You see what I'm saying? It just eliminates all the crap of the real estate business, fixing on houses, toilets, and stuff. And who wants to do all that work? Some people like working. They just can't get it in their mind that it's possible to be paid for doing nothing. And that's exactly nothing. what I'm looking for, just for breathing. So, I want to be paid for no reason. So you're telling your tenant buyer that comes into the deal that um, it's, it's as is, basically. Yeah. As okay. is. Do your that inspection, check it out, make sure it's something you can handle. If they have the right means to deal with it. It's their baby, not my baby anymore. So let me ask you. I know that you said it is as is, but if the, but if you went into that house and the carpet was absolutely filthy, you wouldn't clean it. Why would I clean it? That's their job. Why would I? Do, why would I put any money into it? Now you can if it makes you feel better. Now you could be operating a business from feelings. That's something you have to deal with internally from you. But the house is what the house is. You either love it or you don't. If somebody's going to move in there, they might want blue carpet. They might want green carpet. They might want white carpet. You don't know what they want. Why would I go change something, paint something, switch some stuff around when somebody's going to go in there and change it anyway? They're going to make it the way they want it. Not the way I like it, the way they want it. You see what I'm saying? So why go so change do you something have that any, they can do on That makes sense. So do you have any contingencies of what they cannot change, like, you know, going in doing demolitions to the walls and knocking out walls? Do you have any contingencies in your contracts about that? Yeah, anything major like that, yeah, we don't want them doing that. But generally, so that's, that's, you know, when the uh -huh. research shows, every deal that goes through like this, majority of them, I would say one out of ten actually really go cash it out at the end. Uh, actually, they'll get mm -hmm. a loan and cash you out. So most people don't do that, so you end up keeping it non-refundable. Not that you try to do that. They just didn't buy the house within the time frame allowed it. That's not your fault. That's the agreement they made. Now, you can extend that if you want to up the rent or something like that. If you want and you to, have, yeah. Yeah, so you got complete control and options. You know, they have an option to purchase the house at their predetermined price, or and they have the option to either move out or just extend it if you let them and say, all right, I'll up the rent an extra 50 bucks, or, you know, you got to move out or whatever. You know, it's totally up to you. But I will never, you know, if I have a subject too, they can stand at a life, life of the loan. They can pay the whole mortgage off. I don't care. If they cash <laughs> me out, I don't care. If they, if they stand there for life, I don't care. Why care? You see what I'm saying? We care about stuff that don't yeah. matter. Just get your money. Yeah. Why are we worrying about yeah. what they do? And, you know, and like I say, typically yeah. they're going to give the house back in better condition than when you gave it to them because they're going to fix it. Hopefully. Up. Yeah, no. that, that they, hopefully. They, they're dealing yeah. with a different mindset. You're not dealing with renters. You're not dealing with Section 8. You see what I'm saying? That's a different yeah, part. You're dealing with owners. It's a different mindset. So do you screen who you put in there? Very well, so very much so. Okay, okay, okay. So I can but understand really, why you say that. Screening, I mean, the major thing when it comes to screening is, one, do you have a large enough deposit to make you feel good? Now, that's when you want to put your feelings in it. You got 50000 to move in? I think you can move in. You see, I don't care what your credit looks like. Then you got you, you want to make sure they got a good deposit and they have a you know an income to sustain that payment, whatever that monthly payment that you agreed to. Whether it's a thousand dollars a month, eight hundred a month, six hundred a month, or even more, two thousand a month if you're not messing with some bigger property, depending on the rent market or you know the market that they can do whatever they agree to, they can you know pay for a monthly payment. And then third, um, is credit. So you got like I say, first thing, how much is your large deposit you're going to put down? That's my first step. You got a good deposit, you're probably going to get in there. Two, if you got the monthly payment that, that sustains more than whatever I got to pay for that mortgage, more than whatever I got to pay that seller of the real house, whatever that, as long as there's a cash flow in between there, I'm probably good with it. And third is credit, which I don't really care about the credit because you got a down payment. That's your that's your credit. You got cash. So, you know, these are for people with horrible credit with plenty of money and tax season is coming up. So get that money. So, um Question about the taxes, because I know when you take it over subject to you, you um, assume all the responsibility for the property, including the property tax. So how do you do that if you if you have a house with a property tax of like five, seven grand? It stays in escrow. If it's already in escrow on the on the uh, principal interest tax and insurance payment that you're paying to the mortgage company, why why change something that's already coming up? Now, but the taxes may go up. That's, that's that's why you don't want to keep them in there too long. A year, two years, you don't want to keep them in there too long. And if you do keep them in there longer, like I said, if you do an extension, you're going to have to raise that price up to cover that. Raise the rent. Basically. You're going to have to raise the rent. That's why you only want them mm -hmm. in there like 
two years, maybe three at the most. When you start getting up over that, you know, state up taxes go up, you know, eight hundred dollars over those three years. It's like, well, wait, wait a minute, who's paying it? You. So that's why you don't want them out there. So that's why you have a contingency. You say you put them in for two years. You know, how much can they go up in two years? Maybe a little bit, maybe a lot. But after that, we probably going up if you haven't cashed me out by now. Right. Okay. And then you got the property exactly. value going up. So, so you got two things you're going that's in your favor. One, you got the property value going up over time, and then you got the principal pay down of the mortgage balance while they're paying their payments to you every month. So you can't lose, no matter what you do. You cannot lose. The only way you lose is not play. That is true. That is true. Well, I'll tell you one thing. This this um this conversation has has truly enlightened the questions that I had. Um, and so I was glad to be able to get this information in one conversation as opposed to, you know, just trying to ask several people who have been in the game for 15 to 20 years and just trying to piece all of it together. It was easier just to get on the phone and just ask everything that, that had been holding me back, just the little small things that I wasn't understanding. So I really appreciate yeah, and it. And it's small stuff. And like I say, that, that $1 30-day trial on that program that I sent you, the link, uh, I would say go ahead and get that and get the study, and then you'll learn all this stuff pretty easily. It's all laid out in video format. You just watch a couple of videos, listen to a couple of videos. Before you know it, you'll understand all of this stuff, and every answer will come right in your face. You'll say, wow, why are people doing this other way still? But, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I don't tell everybody, but you, they can keep buying houses all they want and you know, fixing them up and doing all that work when you don't have to do any of that crap. That's all the old way, in my opinion, perfect for me in the new age. All right. That is very true, very true. Well, I de- I definitely think I'm gonna go ahead and um check that course out. I just it, when I saw that one dollar, I was like, man, this can't be real. <laughs> but I appreciate yeah, well, it. it is what you make of it. There's people to go spend ten and twenty and thirty thousand dollars on a real estate education. I learned it all on the internet, so it, it doesn't even make sense, you know. But I can't say everybody can do that. But I took the time and said I'm just gonna learn this stuff. You know, you pick out the things well, that's good, and you pick it and get rid of yeah, the stuff that's bad. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with investing in yourself as well. Yeah, well, you know, just be smart about it. That's true. Don't go give them forty, fifty thousand. I know somebody gave eighty thousand dollars in real estate stuff, and there was absolutely no reason to be spending that kind of money. No reason. When I just told you there's a dollar program, and even after the dollar is like sixty bucks a month, but that's still pennies compared to the money they're spending. You know what I mean? Stupid money. Correct. Correct. Uh, absolutely.